higher frequency you higher frequency me higher frequency Blessings, YouTube. Blessings. And welcome to Higher Frequency University. Um, I think today for the first time you might be able to see me a little clearer. I've been uh, trying to fiddle around with the lighting a little bit so that you could see me better. But really I prefer if you didn't because I, I more want you to hear what I have to say and not really uh, be distracted by, you know, looking at me or trying to look at me. So, um, but I'll get a balance of it somehow, some way. And um, in fact, that's kind of what today's topic is about, um, the balance. I know uh, the title might be a little misleading, but actually it's not. Wait till you hear what I have to say. Today I wanted to talk about the feminine energy and world chaos uh, the relationship my theory my my feelings on it um, to begin we have to talk about what is that feminine energy what is that feminine spirit what is it about um, what what does it represent as far back as I can remember hearing, or you know, as far back as most of us can remember hearing, women are either personified as devils and demons, you know, out to get men, or they were personified as healers and uh, nurturers, the elders, you know, you always went to the mystics, those were the ones who could tell the future, uh, could you know, help resolve any issues. They often lived isolated up in the mountains. And, and the thing about it, those particular women were always highlighted in more indigenous cultured stories. Um, anytime you hear about any culture that wasn't westernized, they more likely turn to uh, a female shaman. And when did that change? I feel like it changed when they discovered the new world. And it might have been a little bit before that, but I live here, I live in this culture, and I feel like this culture suppressed that spirit, that energy. Um, first, let me go back, because I didn't even say what it represents. That feminine energy represents life, regeneration, creation, uh, when you think of women, you think of childbearing, um, you think of nurturing, you think of caring, empathy, anything that has to do with feelings. You might think of uh, curvy, um, you know, soft, delicate, those type of words come to mind. Um, and for some, when they think of women, they think of deceitful. Um, they think of us in terms of something to be afraid of. And I feel like in this, in this country, in the Western culture, that's what it began with. Because uh, the, the forefathers, as they like to be called, were into certain things. And I feel like they knew a little bit of something. They, they all were into the Kabbalion. They had to be. Because when you look at the money and things like that, you see certain symbols that are um, placed strategically in, in places around the world and in their culture and in their system. And so that's what leads me to believe that they knew a little something and they knew that that feminine energy was very powerful. But what they did was they feared it instead of using it and trying to keep everything out of balance. Now, I don't know if that makes any sense. Let me, let me, let me try and say it again. I feel and believe that the world is in the state that it's in because there is 
an enormous suppression of the feminine spirit, the feminine energy, and um, just females in general. And to be clear, I'm not saying that the world would be much better if women just took over. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, as a matter of fact, I don't believe that um, it is in our nature to, to want to be in charge or to want to be in control. That's not our thing. Our thing intuitively and um, deeply innately is to, to nurture and to care for and to create and bring forth life and then um, again take care of it and keep it sustaining, maintain it, not you know to destroy. I think that men are designed differently and I'm, I'm not man bashing, you know I love me some men but I'm saying that we're, we're designed differently and true there's a, a natural order to the world or supposed to be you know, there's universal laws that, that say, you know, that there's a balance. They, they talk about this balance, and we can go into that a little later, the universal laws, but, you know, there's supposed to be a balance, and yet we don't have one. You know, the feminine spirit, that feminine energy is suppressed at every turn. The earth, the earth itself represents life, creation. Um, you know, that grounding. Without the earth, we have no food, we have no shelter, we have nothing. Most of our resources come from the earth. And yet, she is uh, raped, raped continually uh, on top. And, and now within, you know, they're going underneath, they're taking all the minerals, they're taking everything, they're just depleting her. Imagine, um, you know, if you're a female, imagine not just being raped from the surface, but from within. And actually, as a woman, sometimes it feels like that to live in this world. Like, we're just constantly suppressed, suppressed at every turn. And for what? For what? I think it's because the men have always known that our power, our strength, our resolve is very strong. But rather than to understand it, they fear it. And it is that fear that causes them to suppress it. The water, the oceans, also a feminine energy element. Um, polluted, poison, piston, you might as well say. They don't give one rat's behind about the water. And yet we need water, water and earth. Those two things sustain mankind, and they are constantly, constantly ravaged and polluted. Women, as I said, treated badly from way, 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 way back, but not from the beginning. Because when you look at the indigenous cultures, the pre-cultures to the pre-societies to our societies, to our culture now, Women were held in high regard. Women were glorified. Women were treated well. True, there was always that one man whose ego, you know, couldn't bear it. But for the most part, women were held in high regard. It wasn't really, I don't think, until this country that they, they even practiced the, the patriarch's style of, of ruling. Now, um, don't quote me on it. You can check. Go back and, and check and see if I'm, you know, if I am wrong, just let me know gently. Um, but it's here that a lot of that suppression started, you know, uh, with the pilgrims. Think about things like the Salem witch hunt. They put women in check early in this country. They put them in check early. And how they did it was through fear. Can you imagine being a woman and hearing, just even hearing, forget about seeing it, hearing that women are being burned at the stake for being a witch? What the is a witch? Like, for real? And it got so bad that men, if a woman didn't do what he wanted them to do, guess what? 
they became a witch the next day and they were burned. So women had nothing, no choice, had no nothing really that they could do but submit and give in. They were here in a new country. They didn't have money because remember, they start making money the system. If you didn't have money, you don't have any power at all. And now you couldn't even open your mouth. You didn't want to do anything wrong. You couldn't talk to certain people because you didn't know if they were going to be accused of being a witch. You couldn't talk to certain people because you didn't know if they were going to be accused of being a witch. And then, you know, anyone that was with them, they're all going to be accused of being witches together. So they did that with terror. They suppressed those women early. Now, that was up north. Then you had down south, you had the whole slave system. They were raping the women, having children with them, telling them the children are not children. <laughs> These are property and uh you know implementing things like the one drop rule so that uh to keep them in servitude too you know well if your mom was a slave or a servant um unfortunately guess what uh you're going to be one too which means that we can still control you too so whether you were male or female if you came from a woman and and you know who didn't come from a woman you're held in servitude as well so they did a lot of things um all for the benefit of money, not keeping in mind that there's a natural order, a natural balance to the world. And that same disregard, as I said, that began way back then has been carried out till now to the point where, where the elements were once in balance. And when I say elements, that includes us too because we come from the earth and we are, you know, guests or I guess you can say citizens of the earth and once all of that continues to become unbalanced this is what we have we no longer have harmony and peace but rather chaos and now again I'm not saying that women need to take over and be in control but we need to bring that energy back to a more balanced state. We need to give the earth a chance to replenish. She can replenish. That's the beauty of her. But she's got to be given a chance and that's what we don't do. I know it's nice to be able to eat bananas and certain fruit year round and you know it makes us feel healthy but the truth of the matter is that the earth needs time in between those crops to replenish so that's why certain things are only available certain times of year and we should respect that we should respect some of the natural laws and instead of trying to always impose um, our will on them and even that act of imposing that forcefulness that's all very masculine and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it but there's a time and place for everything and we need to, as I said, restore the balance. And how we restore the balance, I'm not saying bring men down to where we are, but rather we need to start bringing that feminine spirit back up. We need to start being mindful of our water sources and um, of the earth and take better care. And through doing that, we elevate that spirit. What's really crazy to think about is that Women can stop everything. If we really, really, really wanted to, and if we could unite and galvanize like the men do, we could stop the whole show. And you all know what I'm talking about. All we have to do is just pick a day and say, no, you're not getting none. And you know what I'm talking about. And even, even not even on an intimate level, just as far as uh, cooking, cleaning, nurturing. If women were just to say no, not until the poor little girls in India are given protection from these perverted, psychotic, uh, I don't even know what else to call them, vile, grown men who are trying to marry them. No not until the young ladies in the four have been, uh, have been protected from castration. No, 
You understand what I'm saying? Do you get where I'm coming from with this? No, not until the, the food that we are giving our children is safe from chemicals that are going to kill them later on. No, not until our water is treated properly and cared for and maintained and monitored from chemicals being dumped into them. Do you understand where I'm going with this? We can just say no, but we choose not to because that fear is in us. That fear is in us deep. They got us believing that we need money and we need this. The truth is we don't need money to live. We need the earth to live. We need the water to live. We need fresh air to live. What they're doing to the to the atmosphere is also as catastrophic as what they're doing to the water and to the earth. Pretty soon we're just going to die all for the sake of money. It's not making sense. As I said, things are out of whack. It's chaotic. It's out of balance. And what we need to strive to do is bring things back to a balance. Should women be in charge? No, absolutely not. Should we rule together? Definitely. As a matter of fact, I believe we should have a council that not only represents men and women, but also the children. Because the children and the elderly. The children because they have a voice that we don't listen to. Their needs are different and specific to their age group and to their physical development. And we can't, we can't overlook that. We can't forget about that. It's the same with the elderly. You know, not because they're old and they're no longer financially viable do we kick them to the curb. They are the wisdom. They are our memory. Uh, for a lot of people, if you never talk to an old person for them to tell you how it used to be, you don't know anything. You've got to talk to those old people. But what we do is we get rid of our memory so that they can impose their new ways on us without us knowing if it's right or wrong. We don't even care because we don't have the memory to say, you know, that's not quite how it's supposed to be and not quite how we've done it. But so, you know, we need that balance with a council that'll give fair representation. We can rule and govern ourselves based on, you know, what the needs of each group is. But um, that's just me. I don't think it should be by skin color or locality. I mean, definitely each locale should have their council because each locale has different um, challenges unique to their locality, obviously. We wouldn't have the same rules up in a, uh, up north that you would have down south because weather and things like that are different. There's, it's just different type of living. But um, that's just it. So again, um, my belief is that the world right now is in a chaotic state not because the Republicans are in power or the Democrats used to be in power or because these Muslim people here or these Christian people there or those Catholic people there or these Protestant people there. It, that Those are all distractions. It has nothing to do with any of that. The world is a mess right now because we have forgotten how to care for and love one another. But that's it, bottom line. We have put money and material gains and goals above everything, above everything. Imagine that just like the earth, we stop her from producing uh, nutritious fruits and vegetables. Imagine we've got the earth growing fruit with the seeds already dead. They got women like that too now, sterile. People don't understand they're doing it. They're causing the sterility. They're causing the cancer. And why? You know what I'm saying? Imagine when we have technology to, to do the reverse, but it's not profitable. There's no money gains, no capital gains if we feed the world and everybody is happy and healthy. Pharmaceuticals can't make money. But my thing is find another way to make the money that is more beneficial. I mean, yeah, everybody can understand we want 
clear and clean water. So I wouldn't mind paying for clear and clean water, but I'm not gonna pay for water that is not being clean, but rather I'm just paying for people to get some money and they're pretending that they're giving me clean water. No, I'm not gonna pay for that. So there's a difference. But um, okay, I've already talked too long. Homework, it's gonna be a good one and a fun one. I want you to start looking at your relationships. Are they balanced? The universal laws also state that within each of us, there's equal feminine energy and masculine energy. And that at will, we can choose which one to, to bring to the forefront. For most men, because they are afraid of that, feminine energy will suppress it within themselves too. Very dangerous because a lot of your decisions are made from a masculine, more brutish standpoint than from a more thoughtful, uh, empathetic standpoint, which might be necessary at some times. So your homework is to examine your relationships and, and see, are they balanced? between male and male. Is it a balanced relationship? Uh, and when I say relationship, I don't mean uh, intimate or sexual, anything like that. I'm talking about friendships. Uh, it could be father, son, brothers. It could be cousins, whatever it is. Uh, male and female. Also women and women. It could be sisters, cousins, mother, daughter. See if the relationship is balanced. And, and by that, I mean, does one do more? Does one make more decisions? Does one more have more sway over the decision making? Uh, does one have more sway over, you know, just the whole relationship? And if it does, see if you can bring it to a balance. See if you're comfortable enough. Some people's ego, which I, I consider to be a masculine uh, quality, won't allow it, won't allow that balance. I'm not saying put yourself back down, but see if you can bring them up to your level so that it's a more balanced relationship. So that's one part of the homework. And the other part is to start looking at that balance within the world um, and with how you use the resources. With water, when you're brushing your teeth, are you just running the water and just letting it run, run, run as you're brushing your teeth, not using the water? With the shower, do you leave it on like 10, 20 minutes before you get in instead of maybe one minute to get that hot water in? You know what I'm saying? Are you, are you ravaging the resources? Food, um, things like that. Are you overusing the resources? Litter, do you litter on Mama Earth when you go outside? Or are you mindful of where you put that litter? Because some things are going to be on this earth forever and it suffocates. Imagine somebody throwing plastic on your face year after year after year. After a while, you're not going to be able to get to your face because it's going to be so much plastic and plastic is not breathable. So, you know, be mindful of how you, um, how you treat the resources too. And again, let's try to bring things up to a balance. Um, not bring things down because the, the first thing people think, oh, well, if it's in ba unbalanced, do I have to come down? Absolutely not. Everything is about elevate, rising, okay? So that is the homework. Let me know how you do. Sorry for talking too long. Um, this is one of my favorite topics. Like I said, I really believe that once we can restore the feminine energy within the world uh, universally, I think the world will be a much better place. I just hope that um, when people realize it, it won't be too late. So thank you for watching. Blessings. I am Empress T. I am abundantly, infinitely, and graciously yours. Blessings. Higher frequency, you. Higher frequency, me.